So we've now seen a few examples of using separation of variables. Uh, first of all, on homogeneous PDEs, and then we've started to move into looking at how just plain old separation fails with non-homogeneous PDEs, uh, like uh, this one that we've seen in another video with uh, gravity added, a constant, and uh, time independent uh, non-homogeneity. We've seen how to deal with that using a static solution. Uh, but what we're gonna look at now is what to do when we have time dependent non-homogeneity. So things like functions of time, uh, e to the minus t, or some sort of forcing, periodic forcing functions, that kind of stuff. And we're going to use the Eigen function expansion method. So what we saw with the uh, time independent, so the constants or functions of x, we used the static solution, and we've worked through that previously, and found solution along the lines of this one right here. Okay, now separating off these steady state solutions or time independent solutions, um, that can only be applied when you've got a non-homogeneity that's a function of uh, position or just a constant uh, alone. And it works just as well, or well, something to take note of is it works just as well for boundary conditions as well as the PDE itself. So if you've got a boundary condition that has a non-homogeneity in it, you can uh, separate that off in a similar method. So there's an example, uh, 3.1.2 in topic three in the number. Now, when the non-homogeneities in the PDE are functions of time, um, maybe also of space as well, but um, importantly, functions of time, we need to use, or we can use, what's called the eigenfunction expansion to solve the problem. And the idea is that we'll determine the, the superposed infinite sum solution form for the corresponding homogeneous problem. So ignore the non-homogeneity for a moment, get the superposed infinite sum solution, and then what we do is, instead of just having a Fourier coefficient, which is a constant, you know, the ANs and the BNs, that kind of stuff, we'll change that Fourier coefficient to be a function of time itself, thereby trying to find that Fourier coefficient function of time such that it will deal with that non-homogeneity that we've got in the PDE. So it turns out that what we do then is all of these time dependent parts of the series can be combined uh, to give an unknown function. We then look for that function of time uh, and we multiply it by these functions of space, things that we've already seen like sine m pi x's over l's, uh, which uh, we'll, we'll start referring to them as eigenfunctions of the problem. All right, so let's have a look at an example. Again, we'll work with the wave equation. Uh, there it is there with, as you can see on the end there, a time dependent non-homogeneity. So the time dependency is there, e to the minus t. And we've still got our zero boundary conditions, f of x initially, and initially at rest. So we've seen that, or well, we've done this problem before in its homogeneous form. Okay, so that's this wave equation here. And we found that it had solutions of this form, y equal to an infinite sum of bn constants times sine n pi x over l times cos n pi ct over l. If you don't remember that, Go back and check out some of the, uh, the previous examples we've done where we did solve this equation. Remember, this would have been the solution of the x of x equation, this being the solution of the t of t equation. So that's the homogeneous problem. Now, what we're going to do now is, instead of just looking for that bn as the Fourier coefficient based on this initial condition, we realize that if we substitute this back into our PDE, Okay, substituting it in here and here, we wouldn't end up with one on row e to the minus t, we'd end up with zero. Okay, so we need to deal with that by changing our bn's to some unknown function of time. And then the idea is hopefully if we shove it back up here into the PDE, we can somehow form an equation that will let us solve for this new function of time coefficient such that the substitution into the PDE works out and gives us the one on row e to the minus t. So what we're going to do is look for solutions. Okay, this is the same thing except the pink bit. We've changed the constant dn, uh, sorry, bn, into a function of time bn. And then just one more step, I'm actually going to combine that with this function of time. Uh, because, well, why not? We can try to figure out the whole thing all at once. So I'm going to call that dn of t, and then sine n pi x over l. So I've just combined the bn and the cosine function of time, all the functions of time bits have come down to be dn of t. And we call this an eigenfunction expansion. Sine n pi x over l, they're called the eigenfunctions of this problem. 
Uh, they won't always be the eigenfunctions. It depends on the problem you're looking at. Okay, now this solution, uh, you can check yourself, um, or take my word for it, it does, or this solution already satisfies the boundary conditions. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that. The initial conditions though, uh, one of those is the homogeneous one, the, the zero velocity initially. If we look at that one, our new solution that we've proposed, uh, differentiated would give us a sum of dn dashed uh, and the sign part. Evaluated at time equals zero, the dn dashed will be evaluated at zero. So we want that to be equal to zero to satisfy this initial condition. Okay, now if that's the case, we don't, well, we can't have sine m pi x over l equal to zero all the time, because for some x's it's not, so we must have dn dashed at zero is equal to zero. So that gives us an initial condition for that little suite of dn of t functions that we're going to try to find. So it looks like we're probably going to get some sort of differential equation for dn of t and have to solve it. Now remember that once we do have that, we can go back, substitute it here into our eigenfunction expansion, and we'll have our yx of t solution to the original PDE. Okay, so if we substitute that eigenfunction expansion, which I've called equation one, substitute that into the original PDE, okay, so you'll need to differentiate it twice to get the left-hand side of the PDE uh, with respect to t, sorry. Differentiate twice with respect to x for the right-hand side. So there we have those, there's the time double derivative, second x derivative, and then the time-dependent non-homogeneity on the end there. That's what we get if we substitute our eigenfunction expansion in. I'm going to call that equation two. And when I look at that, um, it kind of suggests to me, if I look carefully, I've got an infinite sum of something times sine n pi x over L. Then I've got another infinite sum, the same kind of sum, of something times sine n pi x over L. If all these things are equal, it'd be really nice if I could somehow have that also as an infinite sum of something times sine n pi x over L. So the form of that equation two suggests that we express our time dependent non-homogeneity as a series in sine m pi x over L. And that's exactly what I'm suggesting we do here. So we write e to the minus t on rho is equal to an infinite sum of something times sine m pi x over L, where the something is going to be a function of time. So that's a little bit different from what we normally do. We normally just have a constant there. But if you think about it, this is a, a sine function of x kind of infinite sum. Okay, and normally we'd have a constant out the front here. Okay, but normally over here we'd have a function of x. Here we've got a function of time. So it's almost like we're saying, well we are saying, for each t that we have here, there is a Fourier sine series for the odd 2L periodic extension of e to the minus t on rho. So for each t, this is a constant. So e to the minus zero over rho, that's a constant. e to the minus one over rho, it's a constant. e to the minus pi over rho is a constant. So we're setting up all of these infinite sums to represent all of those t's. All right, well, if that's the case, then our Fourier sine series theory says that the gn of t's, we use the same formula, it's just that we're going to have this one on row e to the minus t thing in there instead of our usual function of x. Okay, for each t, that is a constant function of x. There's no x's in it, it's just like a constant. So gn of t is a Fourier sine series formula, 2 on l integral from zero to l and so forth. As usual, I'll leave you the integration by parts there. Although in this case, it's not an integration by parts because it's not a function of x, it's just a constant. And we get this form as our gn of t function. Okay, so in other words, e to the minus t over rho can be written as an infinite sum of this Fourier coefficient that we just found multiplied by sine m pi x over l. It just happens that the Fourier coefficient is also a function of t. Okay, now we've got that represented as a sine series. We can take it back up here to equation two and replace this piece with a sine series. So everything then in equation two is going to be in the form of a sine series. So we've got this one here, uh, the x double derivative and the non-homogeneity, all those functions, uh, sorry, all those infinite sums of something times sine m pi x over L. All 
All right, well that sort of suggests to me then that I can combine all of those as a single sum of some stuff multiplied by the sine m pi x over L. Okay, and the stuff is going to be, well, it'll be dn double dashed. Uh, that minus will become a plus if I take it over the other side of these bits, the constants times dn of t. And if I take this part over to the other side, that'll become a minus. So you can see in the next slide, I've done that, put it all together, infinite sum of stuff. That's all the stuff I just highlighted in yellow on the previous slide. Sine m pi x over L must be equal to zero. So I've shoved it all on one side in one sum. Now, as we've seen, we know already, sine m pi x over L is not zero everywhere. So we must set this piece in the brackets equal to zero, which gives us this equation. And if you look closely, or maybe it'll help if you rewrite it in this form, we've got dn double dashed plus something times dn is equal to something. We've got ourselves a second order non-homogeneous ODE for the dn functions. So if we can solve this second order ODE, we'll get our dn function. All right, well, it's just a constant coefficient there and a time-dependent non-homogeneity on the right. We can solve that by putting together a homogeneous solution, which in this case is this cos sine part, and a particular solution to deal with the right-hand side, which I'm just gonna suggest is a constant times e to the t, because that is all the right-hand side is. It's a constant times e to the t, uh, minus t. So that's my suggestion for a particular solution. And now we're at a stage of having these arbitrary constants, a n and b n and capital A for our particular solution. Okay, well, remember earlier, we found that initial condition, dn dashed of zero, that's gonna help now. Okay, so in this case, if that is our solution for dn, its derivative will look like this one here. Okay, just differentiating with respect to t. Evaluate that when t is equal to zero, the sine will go away, the cos will go to one, and the e to the minus t will also go to the one. So we'll be left with this uh, requirement that zero is bn, n pi c over L minus A, which gives us an equation for A, capital A. So we now have the form of our particular solution, A e to the minus T. We know it's this uh, combination here times E to the minus T. Now we can take dn and dn's second derivative and substitute those back into our ODE, okay, which gives this really big mess here. Okay, there's the second derivative, uh, the function itself, and the right-hand side, okay, and we know what a and b are, oh, sorry, a here, we know what those are. The other thing that we can notice then is that actually there's a bit of cancellation there, this term with this one, this one with this one, they go away, and we're just left with these two on the left and this one on the right. Okay, which tells us here that uh, a outside of uh, this term, or this factor, sorry, is equal to the right-hand side. And we can get a form for A uh, just in terms of things that we already know. Okay, so we know A. We also know something about BN now. That tells us that our DN functions must look like this. So the solutions of that ODE, we've still got our cos sine part. There's the particular solution. Remember from a minute ago, we knew BN and A in terms of each other. So we can use that to replace BN with something to do with A, so we replace A, and we have a form for BN here. So we can sub that back in. And finally, we have our DN. So DN is going to be AN cos plus this big chunk times the sine, plus all of this times E to the minus T. So we've got that DN function now. Just moving backwards through the slides. Okay, remember that we were trying to say that we could write this dn of t multiplied by sine m pi x, and that would give us our eigenfunction expansion for the solution. So we can substitute that dn n in now, and we have y of x t is, okay, well there it is in the square brackets, okay, these ones here, that's our dn of t multiplied by the eigenfunction sine m pi x over l. Right, we're almost there. The only thing left to do is use that uh, initial condition y of x zero equal to f of x. 
Well, if this is our function here, aster the equation asterisk, y of x zero, substitute t equal to zero in, you get a one there for the cos, zero for the sine, so that whole piece goes away. And the coefficient stays because e to the minus t goes to one. So we have this big coefficient left over multiplied by sine m pi x over l. And so that means that we must choose a n in a n plus that coefficient. So that's the square bracketed part. We must choose a n such that that is, or are the coefficients of the Fourier sine series of the odd 2L periodic extension of f of x. Okay, so we've got our solution. And now we've got what the only leftover coefficient a n, that's given by that equation. So the formal solution of our PDE all the way back at the start is complete and it's given by equation star right here, this whole piece, provided a n is defined by equation star star. Okay, so that was dealing with a time dependent non-homogeneity using eigenfunction expansions. Now, as you can see, 16 minutes in, the eigenfunction expansion is a little bit involved. Okay, but there's an excellent summary of it on page 48 in the topic three notes. Now, probably practice is the best way to work on that one. Now, you might, might wonder, thinking about that, do we really need to worry about the static solution method? That was the other method we used when the non-homogeneity was a constant or just a function of x. And you wonder, will eigenfunction expansion work with that as well? Well, yeah, we don't really need static solution method. We don't need it. Eigenfunction expansion would work. Uh, but as you've seen, it's just pretty messy. Um, and the other thing is that the static solution method is important and useful because it actually breaks off a piece of solution which is time independent, a static solution, a steady state component of the solution itself, which is often quite useful and something that people are interested in. If you have a look at the equation we've just solved, uh, we don't have, well, in this case, it wasn't time independent, so it wouldn't have, but you won't get that same static solution coming out uh, as easily if you use the eigenfunction expansion method. Okay, so I'm going to sum up uh, non-homogeneities for a moment. Uh, so some of this I haven't um, covered in the examples, so you will need to try some more examples yourself. Uh, when when non-homogeneous uh, boundary conditions occur in Laplace's equation, Okay, we use superposition principle number two. We divide the problem into two or more, if we need to, subproblems, each of which can be solved with separation of variables, and then we add those solutions together for the full problem. When we've got time independent non homogeneities, uh, and they may be in the boundary conditions or in the PDE itself, separate off a steady state or a static solution. We have seen an example of that. Uh, when the non-homogeneity and the boundary conditions are time dependent, we transform it into a time uh, dependent non-homogeneity um, with homogeneous boundary condition. And finally, like we've just seen, eigenfunction expansions are used whenever we have time dependent non-homogeneities in the PDE itself uh, with homogeneous boundary conditions.